Um, we introduce Sanjeev Kumar Biswas. So, Sanjeev, are you here? All right, all mic'd up. Um, I'll give you a brief introduction, which is that Sanjeev's got over 19 years' experience working in the software industry. He'd been at Adobe Systems for 13 years and worked as a lead architect on many of their products and initiatives. He was an Adobe Distinguished Inventor and Adobe Founder Award winner. And he's also filed 23 patents in the USA and more than 30 uh, filed in the US Patent Office. So Sanjeev asks how AI can help in automating all the manual work in journalism and publishing. Uh, this is representing Singapore Press Holdings. And how AI can help to automatically translate articles from one language to another. And so he'll cover these initiatives as part of your portfolio. Thank you, Sanjeev. Thank you. <coughs> uh, thanks for inviting me. This is uh, really exciting. You know, I'm here to show and share what we are doing at Singapore Press Holdings. Um, but before that, I would like to just, sh by show of hand, how many of you actually read you know, the physical paper, the newspapers? One, two, three. Uh, no, SPH employees are not allowed. So one, two, three, okay. only three, four. So that's why you see, you now we need to, and how many of you actually read news on mobile phones? See, oh my God, everybody. So you know that that's, that's kind of known to everybody. And we need to see how SPH can transition from being print only uh, newsroom to digital uh, newsroom. And that's where this whole digital transformation is happening at SPH. And I'm here to share a few of the things that we are trying to do. Uh, so I think um, I have already been introduced. The one thing that you don't know, I have no background in media business. Okay? No background, zero. So <laughs> I was in Adobe for 13 years, and I was more into R&D, research and development. Um, so I'll quickly go th through the introduction of Singapore Press Holdings. So as you can see here, we have a lot of publications, like English, Tamil, Malay, and uh, Chinese. And um, our flagship uh, publications are Straits Time, Business Times, and Zaobao. Zaobao is very popular in China. Um, so apart from publications, news, we are also into magazines, radio, uh, outdoor media advertisements, and of course property. Don't ask me why. So, you know, that's what keeps the revenue coming in. Uh, so we are into multiple vertical business, uh, but our core strength has always been news. So I will share how open source is helping us to go digital and what are the things that we have done already and what we are going to planning to do in the coming uh, few months and years. Before that, I just want to give you a very brief highlight of the landscape or where we use the open source. Uh, Drupal is the core of it. I will tell you how. Uh, if you see around Drupal, we have frameworks, tools, which is mainly for machine learning and AI, right? So I will go through that uh, one by one. So I will show you three use cases which we are, have done already something on, and two, it's something open, we are pursuing that. So let's talk about this, right? So Drupal, as most of you know, it's an open source, and there's a community around it. And um, in SPH, we have so Drupal has two different types of uh, uh, offering. One is where the editors go and uh, write down the stories for web publishing, right? But as you know, SPH is also into print, right? So the Drupal system that we have used is actually also handles the content written for print. So we have a different CMS for print. And so that's where all the stories start. So the journalists or the editors will go there, write their stories, and that will flow into the Drupal system. And it will be prepared for the online version of it. So it doesn't mean that the content written on the print was uh, goes as is. So a lot of edits happens, and a lot of changes happens. We insert a lot of images, videos appropriately, 
which we cannot do on the print side, right? So that's why the Drupal integrates with the print subsystem. And so if you can see the list here, we are using Drupal for our both EMTM. EMTM stands for English, Malay, Tamil media. CMG stands for Chinese media. So we are using Drupal for both this group. Um, in Drupal, we are using uh, some of the custom modules like you know how to handle print. I just explained how we are handling print content. Uh, in the models, we use uh, the views, tools, and panels, display suite, and media. And uh, we also try to contribute to the community. We write components, customize it, and we try to share it with the community. All right. So, so the next one is article recommendation system, right? As you know that if you are reading an article on, let's say, Donald Trump's, you know, the allegation on Donald Trump's, and you would like to, as you go through the story, you would like to know more about the background, you know, and then you would like to see that being recommended up front. You don't want to go to Google and search for articles, right? Um, so that's kind of uh, not the right way to do. So what we have done is we have built a system where we collect a lot of content. So we, we are, there is no shortage of contents because we create contents, right? So we take all the contents and using this uh, open source, uh, you know, uh, um, all the framework that we have, we first clean up the text, get rid of all the stop words, do lemmatizations, and then build a model. So there are different ways of building models. So some models will actually focus on the entity, like you know, who is the main entity being talked about in this article. Some model will focus on a theme where uh, we use LDA, latent decrypt uh, allocation uh, uh, modeling. It's basically combining all the articles together. It will do the clustering and then uh, for each cluster, we'll have uh, the common articles club together. So think about it like um, if you are more interested, so each cluster will be specific to a theme. It's like at a, at a thematic level. Uh, and so that's the model that we have built. And once a model is built, we use it in the production system where uh, if you go through the statesam.com, you read an article, we feed that information to the system and it triggers the output and uh, so as you can see there are so many articles right how do you decide which articles to recommend so that system works in two level one is at the bottom level which gives you the entire cluster and it has all kind of articles right but from that cluster of uh, articles you want to extract a subset out of it and we don't know which subset makes sense right so we run a lot of A-B tests, we run a lot of hypotheses around the trendiness of articles. So in that cluster, we'll pick out those articles which are trending, we'll, and we may also pick out those articles uh, which are kind of, could be random distribution, right? And then we surface it to the, to the user. So it works at a two level, you know? First, first you give, you get the whole cluster, in the second level, you pick up uh, randomize or do some uh, uh, heuristics to pick up which you want to surface. Um, so let me show you a demo. So it's all on production. So I'm just opening this article and um, <clears throat> try to ignore all the ads and images on the top and right side. So if you read this article, this is more, oh, you don't see anything? How do I share? You have to drag it there? Or? No. This is a browser. Sorry. All right. Thank you. 
So uh, I'm going. I, this is straightsem.com, and I'll just open an article. And this article, if you can see the headline, you know, uh, something about women entering politics, right? And um, so ignore all these adverts. Don't ask me why. These are so many ads. So in Straits Times, we have allocated some some section at the bottom for premium contents. You know, ignore that. Here, so this is the one. So. So here you see it's surfacing articles which are closely uh, related to the article that you're reading, right? Even the images looks the same, actually. It's the same person, actually. So that's what the recommendation system is. So now we'll go to the second one, the, the second slide. Okay. All right. What's next? So auto tiger, what does it mean? So imagine you are an editor or a journalist, you're writing a story and you want to make sure that your article is searchable and it surfaces quickly to the consumer. So for that, what happens in the newsroom is when the, when the editor is writing the story, uh, he has to basically append some tags. It's like a metadata. So tags like uh, it's contextual and it's Earlier, it used to be totally dis decided by the editor itself, you know, what kind of keywords he wants to attach to each article. So that's kind of very manual and, and incorrect in some fashion because each individual has a different way of thinking and this, so that keywords that's getting attached uh, leads to a lot of uh, unstability. So we build an auto tiger using Magpie, Keras, TensorFlow, and Spacey, you know, all open source. And as I said, we don't have any shortage of contents. We have a lot of contents. We also have historic keywords being attached. So we use that information to train the model. And it's like a multi-level classification uh, uh, model that we use. And given an article that you write based on what you've written, context, entity, and you know keywords, it will suggest those keywords and entities also. Now it's easier for the editor to select or deselect, drag, drop, whichever he, the keywords he wants to use, and then uh, publish it out. So that works as a search criteria. So it's like a search, search criteria keywords that people will use on the web. So let me show you a demo. So this is a standalone um, application that we have. All that I need to do is just copy the article, any any article that I see. So let me uh, pick this one. It's something I found today. Something on impeachment uh, of Donald Trump or something like that. Uh, so let me copy. That's it. all I have to. So there's some more. Uh, is this something more? This will just ignore that. I, I don't want to co copy all of them. So uh, imagine that uh, the editor has written this article, right? Uh, or the journalist has written this article. Now, before anything gets published, before this content gets stored in my CMS system, I need to tag it. So just hit this tag button, and it surfaces or suggests some uh, tags like Donald Trump, which of course the article is all about, something about Twitter, elections, 2016. But there is something missing. If you have read this article, there is, uh, let me come back to that. So entities, it shows you the entities, you know, and also the keywords, right? So now I, uh, the, the editor can just drag, drop, and select and add the tags here at the bottom. But there is something wrong with if you have read this article there's something missing any guesses good so those impeach you don't see the word impeachment here so so what does it mean so it means that we have to work even more harder to build a good good model right so that's an ever learning process we are continue to build our models and make it more efficient so, all right, so that's
with the auto tagger. All right. So now the next two items that I'm going to show uh, share is basically something which we are trying to solve. We haven't started yet, uh, but you know it's a you know if you, you are interested, if you want to join our hand, you know join our forces, please. You're all welcome. Uh, what does robot journalism means? Uh, you may have heard about it. Robots writing stories uh, uh, and uh, based on some raw data. So we don't want to do anything fancy. Uh, you know, our so the pain point is that you have this COE data, right? A COE is that uh, for vehicles. You know, every every week there is a bidding happens on the vehicles certificate in Singapore. Uh, and that's like structured data. Uh, also, the SGX uh, data, the Singapore Stock Exchange data, you know, which is kind of uh, structured and also unstructured. Unstructured is free. You have to pay extra money for structured data. So, can we com use this structured numerical raw data, right? Something like this. You know, it shows you the month, uh, which category of vehicle amount, you know, how many bidders, you know, on that thing quote. Can we use this numerical data and write a story which looks like this? Because right now what happens is that whenever this report comes in to SPH, one journalist from English will spend time studying this data and writing that article. Not only that, someone from the Chinese department will look into the same raw data and write the Chinese article. So you can see two people spending time on the same data and coming up with two different articles. So can we do something using all the open source that we have, build new models um, to convert raw data into uh, you know, readable text? Not only that, can we use some model to convert the English text into Chinese and make the life for our journalists very easy? Okay. Uh, so the last one is fake news. Uh, I was debating whether to put it here or not because we create news, why should we be interested in fake news, right? Fake news are important because two of two reasons. Uh, in SPH, we don't, it's not just we create the articles, right? We also consume articles from other sources, like New York Times, Washington Post, and we publish them at our site. Um, that's one thing. The second thing is our readers, they also want to get some confidence when they read our uh, stories, whether it's you know true or fake, right? So how can we address this problem? So there are some open sources available. Um, some are dubious. Some are kind of you know exciting to know based on the result that they have sh shared till date. Um, can we do something about it and build some kind of uh, system where? we can show and convince our reader that the, the text, the, the articles that they're reading is actually genuine. You know, it's coming from a genuine source, contents are all real, there is nothing fake in it. So, I mean, that's all I have to share. I'm open to questions. Timely speaker, we are of course horribly behind schedule. So let's take one question while the next uh, setup occurs. Any questions? Oh, come on. Yep. Good. So the question is why Drupal, why not WordPress or some other, you know. So we tried WordPress. We used to use WordPress in the beginning. Uh, but we faced some issues around, um, uh, you know, it doesn't, it did not scale up to our expectations. So we moved to Drupal. And um, we also got support from Drupal community to, and that's what we have been using. Uh, very rigorously and you know it's been working well but you know in the media industry we have this problem of print and uh, digital news right so there is no one CMS which does both together at the same time so everybody has separate system for print one for digital so we are 
thinking, debating whether to build or do something about it and have one CMS which does both. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you. That's the first you. time I've seen what goes on inside a newsroom.